Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. And tonight on Thursday Night Knives, we'll be talking about, well, we'll be doing a pocket check. And uh, I'll be showing off the giveaway knife for Patreon uh, members for next week. That's next Thursday Night Knives. Uh, our main topic is who sent me these knives? Uh, hey, Michael, good to have you here, sir. I received a box with two really sweet knives. Hey, Monster, good to have you with us. And uh, two great knives. No note, no name in the return address. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Time for a fix. That's right. James Hunt. Hello, all. Hey, James, good to have you here. So I want to find out who uh, sent me those. And I want to talk about pass around groups and, and basically how knives uh, have in my life turned into at least for some part. Hey, Dave, good to have you here, sir have turned into sort of like drinkware in Las Vegas. At least that's what it used to be like in the in the early 2000s. Uh, you, you'd leave one place with a drink in your hand, get in a taxi, go two miles away, get out uh, at the next place, put the cup down, the glass down on the bar. It would look exactly like every other glass. And it just kind of it was like blood flowing through, uh, through a body. And uh, that's kind of how knives are. Um, sometimes I have a lot of knives over on a dedicated shelf for knives that are not mine. And it, it, you know, I have to be very careful about uh, keeping them in order because I don't want to lose anything that anyone sends me. So I'm, I want to find out who sent me these knives. We'll get into that. State of the collection, I have nothing new to report, which is depressing, uh, except possibly those knives. Maybe they're not pass around group knives. Maybe they're, um, you know, maybe they're Santa. Maybe they're, you know, maybe Santa just remembered me. Uh, Knife Life News, I want to talk a little bit about the new ZT, and then in general, uh, hey, Tier 1, good to have you here, uh, Justin, and uh, talk about the uh, uh, the new ZT that looks pretty uh, interesting, and is Kershaw gunning for Cold Steel? Uh, we, and then we're going to talk about Cold Steel in 2021, because uh, Jimmy Slash Shredder, good to have, oh, guys, good to have you here. Uh, uh, hello, Chris. Good to have you here. Also, sir, Mr. Blade Oga. Um, so my question with that big Kershaw is, are, are they gunning for cold steel? Uh, might be a little bit too little too late if they are. Uh, but then we move on to cold steel. We'll talk a little bit about that uh, because Jimmy Slash got his hands on the 2021 catalog, put up a video. And uh, well, it looks like they're at least coming back in 2021 strong. And that's good for all of those of us who have been um, uh, going on and on about how, uh, oh my gosh, the brand is doomed. You know, they've been, they've been bought out by the man. They're not going to make big, scary knives anymore. Mark, good to have you. Jimmy Slash sure made it sound good. Oh my God. Yeah, he did. Oh, mm. It sounded like he was eating chocolate cake or, or any other good thing. Caleb. Pleasure to have you here, sir. How are you, Monster? I think Lynn Thompson had all that stuff ordered before the sale. Possibly. Oh, my gosh. What about the new blade shape for the Voyager? That drop point is cool, and I'm usually... Hey, Dirk, good to have you here, sir. I am usually not a drop point guy. I mean, that's I mean that, that's a, such a ridiculous blanket statement, but uh, in general, like, I love this drop point. But in general... The shape doesn't excite me. Theirs uh, does. It looks kind of like the uh, some of their Hunter models, uh, the folding Hunter and and such. So anyway, we'll talk a little bit about that, as I just have done. And then we have a knife fight coming up. Adamus versus AD10. Adamus uh, um, Benchmade is coming out with a new Adamus, a smaller, uh, more contoured, more civilized Adamus uh, for the modern man and woman. So we'll talk about that and find out what you would rather have in your pocket when facing adversity, an Adamus or an 8010. I was just hoping Cold Steel wasn't going to fall apart. Yeah, I was hoping Cold Steel wouldn't fall apart either. And and they have, you know, there's they have a good bit of, as we will see, uh, uh, of the impractical weaponry, which I love them for because we got to have someone making battle-worthy impractical weaponry. They're coming back with the mace. I missed out on the mace the first time. I got the Warhammer, but missed out on the mace. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. Um, so I just wanted to say, you, you saw me uh, pull out the, the old VSEP. I'm going to put it under the knife cam because it's so darn beautiful. Uh, you saw me pull out the VSEP yesterday. Uh, I spoke with Les George uh, on the podcast. And uh, this is the second time I spoke with him. He was on 
episode 17 and and it was uh via phone and and it was uh uh well Got that clicked clicked out of the way. Uh, so yes, the impractical still gets me. LOL. Yeah. Well, how about that mace? Uh, yeah. So Les George uh, on Sunday. What a cool guy. Great guy to talk to. He's got uh, he's got a good sense of humor. He's got a um, I don't know. Is it a Marine Corps sense of humor? I feel like uh, I, I've I I have a few friends uh, who served in the Marine Corps as. Uh, as Les George did, who have a similar kind of way about them. And I like it. And uh, it was great to talk to him. And he shows a lot of cool stuff. Uh, I We talk a lot about the uh, knuckle duster knives he makes, the, the 1918 uh, trench knives, the daggers with the with the gnarly knuckle dusters. And he, he uh, cast them in both brass and titanium. Very interesting. And um, made 10 of each, I believe. So if you have one of those, uh, you have truly won the lottery. I'd love to have one of those things. But speaking of that style of knife, um, if you if you listen to or watch the Black Rock Knives uh, podcast from last week, uh, Ken Vehikite makes uh, makes his version of of that style knife with the knuckle duster, and that one I most definitely uh, am going to order from him because. His, uh, his work is awesome. And I've always wanted a knuckle duster knife. Who doesn't want a knuckle duster knife? Yeah, his daggers are beautiful. And he talks about the uh, designing it also on the show, which is a, a, cool, a cool part of the conversation because he dips into his study of historical knives and he really knows his stuff. Uh, yeah, so definitely check out the, uh, the Les George interview this weekend. So uh, next Thursday night, oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Let me do the pocket check first. What are you guys carrying? What are you guys and gals carrying? Girls? Gals? Gals seems old-fashioned to me, but uh, what's everyone carrying? This is what I had today. Uh, under the knife cam is the Combative Edge Mark I. And this is, I think, their second generation of this, made by uh, either Fox Knives Italy or Lion Steel. Uh, actually, I, I don't know who made this, but it's a very nice, smooth Italian production here. Uh, one thing about this knife, this was made and came out before the before people expected a lot from flippers. Flippers were more like finger guards and a way to assist your your wrist whipping it out. You know, uh, so this is not a if you if you just try and flip it like you would a uh, something on bearings. It just kind of goes that far. So for me, it's it's either a slow roll, and actually to get that out, you kind of can use that flipper to assist, or uh, or you can just flip it out. But uh, this is a really cool knife. I don't carry it much uh, these days. Very, very thin. The long pocket clip, that's fi uh, I think that's Lion Steel who has that clip. A little bit too long for me. Um, a little too too much of a production. Look at all those screws. I mean, come on. Uh, but other than that, a really, really excellent knife. Uh, I love that recurve blade. Forgot about this knife the other day when I was talking recurves. And then the other thing I had in my pocket today was the beautiful GEC number 86 uh, oil field jack, I think they call this. Beautiful clip uh, point blade. And of course, I love that jig bone that autumn jig bone very very nice uh so it was a pleasure to have those in my pocket today i i realize i'm very fortunate when i carry around uh these kind of expensive nice knives and don't even use them it's like carrying around a little a little treasure in your pocket so i i have to acknowledge how lucky i am for that okay so patreon next week the patreon giveaway uh, every third Thursday, Thursday Night Knives, uh, we give away a knife uh, to the people who are uh, gentlemen junkies. And this, 
you, you would go to uh, the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon to sign up, of course. But uh, this is the knife that we're giving away. It is the uh, Off Grid Knives Sea Dog version two blackout model. This comes to us as a generous gift from our good friend Dave at uh, This Old Sword Blade Reviews. Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, this one uh, was a gift to the channel, and it is now going out to one of you. Wow, this is snappy. This is an awesome knife. It is a beefy, beefy knife. It's got D2 steel. It's got that swashbuckling sort of blade. I don't know what you would even call that, uh, but it's cool. Cleavery. I guess it's cleavery, but uh, it's got a decent point there, right? A uh, very unobtrusive secondary lock, just in case you're really horsing something and you're worried about uh, engaging that lock, uh, that uh, lock bar there. They do, they, uh, do give you a good access there. So uh, the lock is welcome because you barely notice it if you're not using it, but if you need it, it's there. And also, speaking of which, it has a glass breaker. I have not tested, I, I have this knife myself, I have not tested the glass breaker. So there you have it, it's your Sea Dog from Off Grid Knives. That is the knife. So check it out, uh, theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon. And uh, Gentleman Junkie is what you wanna be if you wanna be in the running for the monthly knife giveaway, that is. Uh, so tonight's topic, uh, I want to talk about your experiences uh, with knives being passed around and sending your knives to other people. Uh, Alex is sending me something. Budget AD15 is very interesting. Yes, it is. So it's a GRN. It's a Grivery version, basically, of the AD15. And uh, you wouldn't think that that, that engineering would, uh, there, that material would stand up to that engineering. But uh, what do I know, man? <laughs> really, they make it work. Hey, Dave, pocketing the best tech samurai kombu design. Okay, so that that's the new one. We just talked about this uh, last week on on the Wednesday night supplemental. Kombu is a Polish um, knife designer, and I can't remember his uh, his name, but Kombu is his sort of uh, nom de plume. Alien knives DX two DX two. I don't know what that is. Alien Knives DX2. We'll have to figure that out. Uh, but the uh, yeah, that new Samurai has a really cool shaped blade. It actually reminds me of an angular version of a traditional Italian patata blade. Clear top ultra tech. That is cool too. I love the fact that you can see the guts in there. To me, it's a big mystery how it comes in and goes out. As a matter of fact, I kind of won't even watch people's videos on it. I don't know why. I, I guess I'm not. I'm, I'm realizing it only now that I've avoided finding out how they work, because I like to believe in magic. The Inkosi, oh, beautiful, beautiful. Everyone's so classy here. I love the P801 and the wait SB. What's SB? Uh, satin blade maybe, and a Victorinox Tinker, a classic. I love that Reich. Reich. Right. Dirk, had my Jason Knight folding kukri in the pocket this afternoon. Oh, yes, sir. It's never far. And it's your fault, Bob, but I got the folder and the fix. Oh, you got the fix, too. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Can't wait to see a video on that one. Uh, tell me, uh, are the dimensions exactly the same? I'm curious if they stretch the blade out a little or shorten the handle at all. Chris says, Rough Rider Reserve bar back. Uh, been testing it all night, right on. So uh, that's the that's the one that's like a beer scout, right? That's right, right? A beer scout. Michael Morgan says, oh, I got a goodie this time. My first major knife purchase. Oh, ooh, nice. The 0562 tie. That's a great knife. That's a great knife. I had the 0562 uh, when it was LMAX and G10 top that, that was kind of the lower end version at the time they had that and they had a um one with carbon fiber and i don't remember the steel uh maybe the steel was all max i don't remember at this point but what a great knife that is with that slicer grind mm -mm. oh yeah i have the finch cimarron in my pocket to, uh, in my other pocket so that's the uh that's the the new flipper with the uh, warncliffe blade i believe and a uh, man that's another that's a a really 
Okay. When I think of Finch, I think of the Runtley. I know they have plenty other models, but I think of the Runtley. And to me, uh, the, the, the Cimarron is like the follow-up knife to that. It's got sort of the same vibe, same charm. And I think, I think he nailed it. Gregor Garbowski. Thank you, sir. Gregor Garbowski. Gregor Garbowski. Thank you, sir. Sheffield slip joint is now my EDC. That's cool. What's the cool? God, I got to stop. I'm, I'm driving myself nuts with that damn word. Sheffield, a storied, storied location in England that took up a lot of the uh, Bowie knife uh, production in this country uh, early in the late in the uh, Dirk says, nope, the fixed is slightly bigger overall than the folder. Okay. In the handle and in the blade. Excellent. Excellent. I'm going to have to get that because this thing is actually very useful. Menacing. Yes but very, very useful uh, so far. Yeah, all the things I use it for. Uh, Oberland Arms Titan Sep. Timothy Becker. That's, what is that? That sounds cool. It sounds, uh, mm, it sounds mysterious. I like it. L let us know what that is, or maybe we can look it up. Um, so who sent me this? Does anyone know? And, and what is the meaning of this? Is this part of a pass around group that I'm not aware that I'm in or, or what? So a box shows up with a return address and no name. And I open it up and, and these two knives are in there. This is in a pouch, but this is just kind of floating free and there's no note. And uh, it's interesting. This is a seven, uh, what is this? A $30 knife. This is the Civivi Fracture, which, by the way, is really excellent. Hey, how's it going, Lavender Pants? Good to have you here. I'm trying to figure out who sent me these knives. Uh, they showed up and uh, kind of very unceremoniously showed up. I mean, no letter, no name on the return address. And, uh, and I checked uh, both pass around groups that I'm a member of just to make sure I didn't, uh, you know, uh, sleepwalk and push, push. Uh, I want to check out these two knives on my phone and, and not know I did it. And indeed I did not. So uh, anyone know who sent these to me and what the purpose of it is? I'd like to know because I'm really liking these knives and I'd like to carry them. And uh, well, you know, this one I carried around the house a little bit, very sharp. Very, uh, very Medford, super solid, very thick. Let's put this down and check it out. Over, oh man, that's got to be, that's, I don't know. It's over a half inch thick. I'm laughing because someone someone said in the comments that uh, when I mentioned the pull weight of a slip joint recently, he said I must have been wearing skinny jeans when I made that video. and And that just made me laugh. I was like, he said, clearly it's a 6.2 and not a 6, and you must have been wearing skinny jeans. Now, check this out. This is the Infraction by Medford. Look at this flipper. I, I haven't experienced this yet. Monster says, I have the Fracture, and I really like it a lot, especially for $28.50. Yeah, very, very fine construction. I mean, we're going to talk about this in a second. Very fine construction and just dialed in design. And uh, quite attractive. It'd be nice to have in a full-size locking uh, knife like that. If you don't find out who it is, it was me. <laughs> well, that's the thing. If anyone claims it was them, we will we'll talk about return addresses and all that. But look at the flipper. So you have the tang here, and you have the uh, you have the lock bar interface on the blade side, the side where the blade interfaces the lock bar. Right there, you can see the sort of uh, darkened area where it makes the most contact. And then when you turn it to the side, there's a it protrudes just a little bit in an arc that's jimped, but a lot of your finger is going on the actual uh, lock interface when you flip it open. And uh, you, yeah, you you got to give it a little little wrist, give it a little uh, little uh, you know centrifugal force or whatever, and it opens. But just a cool sort of uh, just a unique mechanism the way it hides in there and not for nothing, but this is the most comfortable choil I've ever uh, put my finger in. And I, you know, I'm not a huge finger choil guy. 
Uh, but uh, <laughs> it's, it seems ever so slightly radiused. So uh, my fingers are very sensitive. Dirk says, well, I can tell you that I'm pretty sure that the infraction is sold a couple of months ago. The infraction. That what? Why? That is the first time a titanium fraction to hit the street. R what? Okay, wait. Let me read this again and slow down. It's like I tell the girls, slow down. Well, I can tell you that I am pretty sure that is the infraction I sold a couple of months ago. That is the first titanium infraction to hit the streets when they when they were first when they first introduced it. So did this Dirk? Did this come out with like a uh, t uh, G10 top first or something like that? Yeah, the fracture is pretty sweet. Yeah, it is. So let's pick this up. Oh wait, wait! Before we move on, I have to show you this. Gert says I have the Civivi Picaro, which looks oh quite similar to the fracture. It's a bigger four inch with a liner lock, great neutral handle on it, pretty lightweight and slim too. Very, very much of all of those things, but I really do like the handle shape on this knife. But before we get to that, I just want to point out how the amazing blade to handle ratio on this infraction. Wow. You know, I think Medford is pretty good at that. Medford does, uh, designs his knives. Dirk started out as carbon fiber. Okay. Okay. Ah, thanks for the info. Uh, that would be interesting if this were yours. And, or, or do you know for sure from the, because I know each each one is, you know, the, with the heat treat scale, or not scale, but the heat treat uh, pattern is different and unique. In any case, uh, Medford is very good at designing knives that have great handle to, to blade ratios. And, you know, this protruding sort of triangular part in the front of the of the handle and putting the pivot nestling it right in the apex of that right towards the end of the handle really allows for a lot of uh, room for the blade to swing into. Therefore you can make the blade much longer. Look at that. It's almost. Yeah. I guess if I jam my, I mean, this, this is so wide, this handle is so, you know, almost comic book big that you can, you can, I can put my little fingers in there. I mean, I don't have big sausage fingers here, so even so, you could probably get you could touch that. But I don't, I don't think you're in much danger of actually doing it when carrying this. Uh, great for the spidey flick and all that, but not with a left hand. <laughs> so the Civivi, let's see. So someone sent you two knives with no explanation or return address. Interesting. No, they put a return address. They just didn't put a name on the return address, and they also did not put. Uh, a note inside didn't say didn't say oh hey check these out uh can't wait to see the videos uh, you know don't keep them <laughs> or or send them along to the next guy i don't i just don't know i'm sure that was mine i was the first owner sold it to another youtuber how cool man well dirk it's in my hands right now uh, and i'm wondering uh i'm wondering maybe maybe we can talk offline which we will be doing anyway soon. All righty. So, yeah, let's talk about this for a second. This fracture. Modern slip joint. The clip, if this were mine, I would take the clip off. And I would uh, put it in my little, my little pocket thing. Slip it right in there. Work perfectly. That's This is intended for slip joints there in my world. So, uh, can I open this one-handed? No, I cannot. Oh, I can kind of pinch it open, but then my fingers just got a little bit caught in there. Almost could have been bad. So this is more of a two-handed. Great walk and talk. It's got the half stop. Very thinly ground blade. Hollow ground. Or very thin blade stock, first of all. Distal tape. Or yeah, distal taper. And then very hollow ground. I'm reaching out to him now. I'll let you know when he hits me back. Thank you. I appreciate that. Just uh, kind of want to get to the bottom of it. Um, I love the shape of the blade and this uh, opening hole. Or, yeah, it is an opening hole. It's, yeah, that's how you do it. You just kind of grab it there. And I just, I really, really like this uh, this knife. I really think that handle is very comfortable. Uh, it's contoured. I mean, not contoured, but form-fitting yet. 
not you know, you're not you're not committing too much. Not like you're going to be using all sorts of different grips with this. No, it doesn't. Not for me, Gert. Uh, maybe for well, there you go. I guess if you if you if you write it down here a little bit, you can. It's not as comfortable and or, and or gratifying as that um, as a slip joint person. Man, I shouldn't I shouldn't identify with my with my group slip joint person. Give me a break, man. I can like slip joints and locking knives and fixed blades. Have them all right around me right now. So this might be on the chopping block, by the way. Um, this is the this is the tops knives. Grid tractor. I can't thumb open. Oh, okay. With a two-handed for sure. Uh yeah, I mean you you can if you work at it, but you could just as easily slip up and have it snap back on your fingers. I have large hands, put, uh, but my palm is pretty large. I can one hand the fracture using the opening hole and holding the scales tightly. Yeah, I feel like if you take advantage of the full length of that opening hole and kind of engage it down here, you're, you're more likely to open it one-handed. Great thumb ramp on the blade too. Yes, yes, no doubt. No doubt, and and actually this uh, this here and the half stop. Well, no, no, no. I take it back. I'm thinking of a different knife. So yeah, you do not want to let it go to the half stop with your hand up there, because it will get you. The Picaro has a very similar uh, shaped hole. Makes very comfortable middle to middle finger flick it open. It also has this thumb stud, which is unusual. Oh yeah, that's the thumb stud. That's kind of um, suspended within the hole, like. Uh, like an Elijah Isham uh, design, I believe. Um, the Picaro. You might like the Civivi Trailblazer. So that is that the the rustic gent, uh, but just in slip joint? Uh, because I love the shape of the blade of the rustic gent. I mean, that knife was really great. Great. We'll talk offline, but I found the owner of the Infraction and Fracture. Infraction and Fracture. All right, cool. Yeah, say that twice or three times. All right. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, and thank you to uh, whomever that person is. I'm really enjoying experiencing these knives and uh, I'd like to have a, a, a chat with you. Uh, another knife I had, which, uh, I forgot to mention, I went to a place midday where it would, it would be imprudent to carry a large uh, front right pocket, you know, uh, tactical knife, the one I was carrying today. Uh, you know, it was impractical to carry this because uh, it might draw attention to itself, and I didn't want to do that. But I also didn't want to go knifeless. It's not like I was going somewhere where I had to go through a uh, knife, uh, you know, a, a, a metal detector. So I grabbed this. This is the old. This is a a knife I've had for about ten years now, or, or since 2013. So not quite ten years. It's the Kershaw Hawk 8 Sierra 13 MOV. It was a nineteen dollar knife, and I excuse me, I threw it on an order, on an Amazon order, you know, because I was just, uh, you know, thinking that I was a good boy for some reason and I deserved it. So I got it and it lives permanently in the arm um, pencil pocket of my winter jacket. My winter jacket is a, uh, um, I don't know what they call it. It's like a longshoreman's jacket from, from uh, Duluth Trading Company. And, it, and this blade and when folded hides beautifully uh, right in the pocket there. So this is where it lives. So I remembered I had it because I'm always aware of it, pulled it out, put it in my pocket, walked around with this. So this was part of my, my carry today. I, I had to be honest. I had to come forth. Monster says, everyone, please remember to hit that like button. That's right. Okay. I should be saying that. Hey, everyone, remember to hit that like button and thumbs up it. That's the same thing. Um, so yeah. I'm 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 happy that I've gotten to the bottom of this uh, infraction fracture thing, and uh, and can move on. But I do want to I do want to talk about the idea of of just putting putting knives in boxes and sending them off. It's like it's like on YouTube or within the knife community. It's you have a reputation, and that's about it. I mean, it's not like we're all uh, you know moguls. And we're competing for airtime or, or you know, limited resources. Um, so if if 
you have a reputation for being a stand-up person and 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 uh and and pretty much everyone here in the knife community seems to be that way. I know they're they're jackasses everywhere, but um you know, you you build up trust, you know. And and uh, I mentioned earlier uh, Alex from Alex Knife Box, Alex, you know, Alex. He's sending me a box full of knives and and you know, knowing him, they're not uh they're expensive. They're very expensive and they're valuable because they're one of a kind and unique. And uh, also they represent a lot of hard work uh, by the maker and also uh, an investment in, in risk by the maker. You know, I'm going to do this for a living. So, you know, it's a white knuckle uh, affair for a lot of people, you know, but that's what you do when you have that inside you. You have to you have to let it out. OK, enough of that. Knife life news. Today, I want to talk about this 762. So now, Zero Tolerance is continuing uh, in 2021 on their caliber theme. Is that correct? And on their, on their uh, you know, uh, ammunition caliber theme, numbering anyway, 762, right? Isn't that like the A47? Isn't that a 762? Or... Anyway, I, I, I'm not an expert, but look at that. Interesting. I like the blade a whole lot. Ugh, the rest though, man, hässlich, sehr, sehr hässlich. I, I, but look, great blade to handle ratio here, if you ask me. Uh, and it's that same thing. It's, it's, I think that's the trick. It's that protruding handle. And then you get all of that extra cutting edge. It's like an extra half a cutting edge. <laughs> I enjoy, Is uh, yeah, <laughs> trustworthy jackass. I'm always afraid they will get lost in the mail. Hey, I know, I know. I, I it's that is way more the concern than whoever I'm sending something to. Um, who loves that blade shape? Who? I mean, I absolutely love that blade shape. I like I mentioned before, I do not like the handles. The handle. If you got rid of those windows, which I think are cheesy as all get out, but if you got rid of the handles, it would be a different thing. And if you if you replaced tired old uh carbon fiber in the usual old pattern with either some really cool carbon fiber or just micarta or a nice g10 or something i'd be way more into it but that blade to me is knockout i'm praying my big red edc giveaway package with assisted knife makes it through customs into canada ah michael michael we will all we will all send our juju your way and it will push that thing over the border and into your mailbox in no time. Caleb Townsend, me too, but why I always ensure that? Oh, that's why I always ensure the package. Okay, so we're looking here at this blade. I love the thumb ramp that just comes right off the handle. It's uh, somewhat similar to the to the uh, the less George thumb ramps. Um, and then the dip afterward looks like a great little swale to nestle your thumb in if you're if you're really bearing down on the blade. However, they have that big long swedge on the back, so you're not going to want to add too much pressure to your thumb because that's a thin part of the blade with that swedge. But I think that's awesome. The blade reminds me of the ZT0055. Me too, but just slightly more stabby and organic. And I love the long point of it. Um, yeah, but it's you know it's got that bend right uh, uh, about a, a third of the way from the pivot. And I think it's a very unique shape to look at. But I also think the utility is is high on it because it's sort of like the um, the Warncliffe blade on the on the uh, um, USA made blade uh, half track with the with the Warney that presents the blade at that weird looking angle. But it's great for draw cutting and such. Not a fan of the majority of new releases from any company. They seem a bit lackluster in my opinion. Mine too, Eggs and Ham. Uh, to me, this is like the only thing ZT is coming out with, I think. And, uh, you know, uh, it's not, yeah, Dirk says not a fan of that ZT, just not my style. But if someone gets it and wants to loan it, I would love to review it. Yeah, yeah, do send it to him. Uh, he's got good contextual knowledge of overbuilt knives. Alex says, I love the blade shape, but I'm not into the rest of the design. That's how I feel so far, but many ZT designs this year. 
Oh, okay. I'm not aware of the rest of them. At least this one isn't assisted. Yeah, no doubt. So now the 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 um the butt of the handle there is if if they would just flatten that triangle out a little bit, I'd I'd like it. It's a little too pointy for me, uh, for for capping it with the thumb. But I but I think they have the right idea there. Um, I've heard people say Hogue has a similar blade. Yeah, yeah, on their um on their bug out slayer. I can't remember the name of that knife. The, the, the Deca on the Deca that it has a similar, uh, I was really hoping ZT would partner with Andrew Demko since cold steel sold, or like I said before, Ramon Chavez, ADV Medford, anybody doing solid build knives. Yeah, that would be great. Especially to see an a ADV. I'd love to see some, um, what is it? The butcher? Is that what his main design is? Love to see that. That's the first time stabby and organic have been. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, organically stabby. Some people think this is a retread of the 802. That I believe it was the 802, the one that was the Sinkovich uh, collaboration with Rexford, with all with the sort of uh, uh, revolver theme. Lavender says, "I feel they aren't trying anymore." Kershaw lineup looked good. Yeah. Okay. So the Kershaw lineup, Kershaw lineup looks good. What do you think about the Strata? That's that's the uh, that's the elephant in the room to me, anyway. It, as if any of this is important to me, that's the, that's the elephant uh, in the room is, or the 800 pound gorilla in the room, whatever that expression is, because it's a five inch. The, the large one is five and a half inches, which is, which is exact. You know, that's what most of the large cold steels are uh, except for the six inches, obviously. Um, I have to see that one in person first agreed and feel it. Uh, that, that would probably change my mind. Uh, but also, so the, the large strata is five and a half inches. The small is four and a quarter. So they're not even attempting to make a small version of that. And which to me, uh, indicates they, they, they knew about the cold steel sale and they're like, Hmm, we're not sure what's going to happen. Let's have something ready, something ready to fill the sucking sound of, uh, you know, of the void that is left when all these big knives are pulled. I'm sorry. What was that last one, Jim? Uh, sorry. I need to get a CCW permit. I saw some of the cold steel new designs. We were wrong about Lynn and, and stick man. <laughs> uh, well, uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. Alex uh, looks, looks really good. I, I thought the retread of the, of the broken skull was interesting. It's the same knife, slightly different texture on the handle. I think it's less expensive, maybe made out of GRN, but it's the third iteration of the original trail boss design, I believe, or, 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 or uh, ranch boss. And, uh, you know, the first one was metal with fake Stagalon handles. And then, and then it was the, the broken skull, which was a Steve Austin licensed design. And now it's, coming out is something else can't remember what it's called i need to get a ccw permit monster then i could go over the three inch max oh interesting concealed at least nevada is strange that is interesting i i um i was assuming that our ccws here in virginia covered like automatic knives and whatever kind of knife you want to carry that was the assumption i made uh because i was like well if i can carry a, a pistol you know why couldn't I carry a five inch knife? Pistol can reach beyond five and a half inches. I'm sorry. What was that last one, Jim? I'm sorry. I keep doing that. Looks similar to the 850. That's what I meant. Not the 802. Yes, you guys are right. Kershaw, Kershaw's look awesome. So Shredder, what do you think of the, uh, of the Strata? I like it because it looks like a Navaja. You know, it's obviously, uh, it's like a space age Navaja. Do we have that? Yeah. Uh, the Kershaw Strata. I think Jim's Jim's pulling that up right now, but it definitely has the Navaja look. It's got sort of the um, the overall shape. It's got the large clip point blade with the with the sweep up, and uh, and they're making two versions of that. I also saw. I mean, uh, so before we get the other one, uh, the Kershaw to come up, I want to bounce back to Cold Steel and say that I saw that they they made the wavy uh, the crisp in the four inch blade tie light. That looks cool. So here we go. Uh, Jim's got the, the strata and uh, as you can see, that handle has the horn shape, right? So they really are going for that um, uh, Navaja look with the, with the shape of it. 
it's hard to see from this picture, but there's a bolster on the on the tail end of the handle, which is <laughs> which looks nice. And at first, it took me a second. Oh no, there isn't a bolster. I'm sorry. I thought I thought I saw a bolster once before, but uh, as you can see, it's a, a steel frame lock. I like the brass accent. Okay, so on this side, we can see that that accent acts as a lock bar over travel stop. On the other side, it acts as a bit of sort of art deco flourish, and I like that a lot. The uh, pocketing milled out of the G10 handle looks very comfortable for the fingers that wrap around, and it looks like you get very good access to the lock bar there. So, I mean, this thing looks sweet, and, and the uh, flipper tab hides away in the handle. Looks like cold steel, which is just fine with us. Absolutely, absolutely. And Kershaw, you know, they're not dumb. And, and most of their knives are made for non-knife people, really. But in this case, they recognize, hmm, maybe some of these large knives are going to start going away. So maybe we should jump on, on the action. And I'm glad they did. I think more companies need to do that. Uh, if you look at the, at the pommel area of this, at that curve down, I just think this is... I like it. The more I look at it, the more I like it. Uh, Jim, can you go to the other side again with it closed, the closed view? Yeah, look at that flipper. It's it's already very unobtrusive, but once it opens, it hides in that uh, in the little um, finger flare. Very deep carry pocket clip. Comes in a five and a half and a four and uh, four and a half inch. Um, so of the of the Kershaws I've seen. I like them. Uh, there's one that looks like the mini Mastiff or the mini bull Mastiff. Uh, that looks cool. There's, you know, Kershaw, they always have great designs. Um, but this one, this is probably the one that I'll get. And, and I didn't get the, the, uh, butterfly knife from last year, the Bally song from last year. I have to get that Kershaw cold steel 2021 still alive. That's right, sir. And okay, what does this mean about me? My my instinct was like someone else. I can't remember who who commented here, but said, uh, you know, they probably had it ordered before the sale, and that was my initial thought. I'm like, God, Bob. And and this is this is I'm not casting aspersions on whoever made that comment before, but I'm just like, I, I'm always flying to the distrust, and I gotta I gotta just chill about it. And that's part of what I was talking about. How cool it is. Everyone trusts each other. They're sending their expensive knives around. Meanwhile, I'm over here like, I don't know, you know, mistrusting. So let's take a look at the Cold Steel catalog here. Um, I am happy that I saw in flipping through Jimmy Slash's video. Jimmy, we're going to we're going to scroll through your video a little bit and uh, and show a couple of things off uh, because I scoured the web and I could not find this presentation that you show. So I hope you don't mind uh, that we do this here, but look at this. The first thing that shows up was that, was that ax. So you know that they're, they're not shying away from the weaponry. And then you have, I'm not sure what this is, but it's some sort of medieval looking dagger. And then of course they have, they're bringing back the, what is this? The, Oh, look at that. All right. We got to stop there. So this is in the chaos line. I have the chaos Kukri, which is a, a creation to behold. And uh, they, they also have a Tanto and a dagger. And here now they have a push dagger. They have a push dagger with that nasty knuckle duster and the, and the nubs on both sides for knocking noggins. And I think that's got to be a four inch blade. That's got to be a four inch blade, double edged. That thing is for work officer. Uh, I'm in construction. Okay. So now they ha they're coming back with the three inch, uh, the three inch recon. That's the one that was right before this. Uh, the, th the three inch recon was a very popular knife uh, and it just kind of went away. I'm not sure why. So they're bringing it back this time, I think in Aus 10. That right there, I, I believe that's in, if you, yeah, Aus 10, I think if you squint your eyes. This little sucker looks cool. Jimmy Slash is the man, so jealous of his 5 Max. And he's also got what, an AD12 or something. Uh, let's see. No, let's get ahead of ourselves. The 2021 Cold Steel lineup was all about was all in the words long before the sale. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Well, you have to imagine that it was because, oh, yeah, there's that secondary lock a lot like the uh, the, the knife giveaway. 
knife. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, we will have to wait until at least 2020. Yeah, right. So, I mean, the point is they're a year ever. It's a year ahead of production or behind or whatever it is. What we're seeing now has been in the works for a year, I think is what the, the idea is. They're coming back with the, with the full scale kukri with the guard. I love that. Here's the master Tanto looking all shiny. And uh, there it is right there. Stop right there, Jim, if you would. Yeah, they did bring back the Talwar, uh, like a lot of people asked for. Yes, that is good. Um, I need to get one, um, want to get one, because I, I never got a full-size Talwar. I had a four-inch, and I got rid of it regretfully. Uh, at least the new owners didn't come in and cancel all the knives we love. Plus, they brought back the Talwar and the Formax. And that uh, 8015 in Grivery, that looks pretty pretty interesting. Uh, this right here on the screen is the four inch version of the of what was originally a signature Lynn Thompson signature edition, six inch uh, wavy bladed Chris tie light. So now it's slightly more pocketable, but equally as menacing, you know, pull it out to cut your sandwich. People are going to think you're a pirate. Very cool knife. I love that they do the Chris. Not an easy grind to do or to do right or to or to sharpen evenly. Stop right there. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, Chris. I'm with you. Black Rhino. When when uh, that guy put out that video said, what can we make for you? That's what I responded. Hang on one sec. All right. Well, never... Never far from hand is my trusty cold steel war hammer. And this came out with that mace way back when. Uh, I don't know when. Um, I remember uh, my brother Vic and I were, were watching um, one of the early proof DVDs. It was like Christmas break from college. Uh, uh, my brother was in law school. I was home from college. And we were watching um, Lynn Thompson and, and his bros over at Cold Steel dismembering pig pig carcasses and destroying cars with these and doing all sorts of stuff. And my dad walked in and he's like, what are you guys watching? And then he left. And now he's probably watching right now. He has become a knife junkie. Uh, but uh, so they're coming back with the mace. They brought out the mace when they brought this out and some of the first batches of tomahawks. And I'm sorry, but this is cool. Not all of us have RMJ money. You know, I would love to get an RMJ uh, Tomahawk or, or, um, or a uh, Warhammer. Cause he makes some really, really amazing stuff, but I can't yet. So uh, I will settle for that Warhammer and you better believe I am getting that mace. And I don't know, it might ride in my car. No, no, no. It's not going to ride in my car with me. I can't, uh, a hammer rides in the car. Cause you can always play off a hammer, but a mace, a little on the nose perfect for dealing with steel plate armor burglars <laughs> yes exactly i'm i'm gonna bash that armor around your body you'll never get out of it oh my gosh yes but uh this time it looks like it has eight lobes as opposed to the former six lobes so these kind of uh hunting knives here where you can replace you got a gut hook there where jim has the and then you got a little buoy there for for dressing uh for for skinning and uh, and a Warren Cliff. There we go. That's what everyone wants. And uh, I will be getting the serrated version, even though it's not quite as pretty. It's I love cold steel serrations and a big run of them on that big curvy scimitar blade. Yeah, why not? They're coming back with the uh, Trail Master. This is the um, Recon Scout, which is the small version of the Trail Master. I always kind of wanted one of those. Kitchen knife. Cool. Okay, here's another uh, small uh, three-inch recon. Glad they're bringing it back. Okay, stop right here. This range boss. This is the retread of the of the um, broken skull, and here it is in a in a differently textured. It looks like a, a very roughly randomly textured handle, whereas the uh, the other one had a different kind of handle. Uh, same blade shape, same blade uh, handle shape, same weird jimping over the lock bar that doesn't actually engage your thumb. I mean, it sort of does if you really horse down on it. Same clip. So everything about this is the same as the original. It was called the Ranch Boss or something like that. It was the silver one with the staggle on, and then they came out with that. And so this is the third iteration of that. 
interesting. I'm glad because that design shouldn't go away. It's a great design, but I guess Steve Austin is no longer involved. Oh, you better get your buckler too. They just had a plastic buckler on the last page because you never know when you need to pull out a buckler. Yep. There it is again. The secondary lock. This is the, uh, was this the two, the super, super lock hunter or something like that. Oh, uh, there it is. Pause right there. The 8015 light, ladies and gentlemen. Look at what you can do with Grivery. So now I'm wondering, or Grivery, I'm wondering, is the lock bar also Grivery? And is it solid Grivery or is it lined? Is it like a Voyager? Probably, probably like a Voyager. It's probably got steel liners in there. As a matter of fact, I think if you look at the lanyard uh, hole, you can see the steel liners. Um, it'll be interesting how much they charge for the 8015 light. Yeah. Oh, actually, it has to have liners. Yeah, it has to have liners to house all of the, the the parts and also to to screw the the clip into and all that. That's so cool. I'm glad I didn't get rid of my 8015. I was there for a minute. I was like uh, I should just get rid of this and and try and get my hands on a on a Demco 8015. I'm glad I didn't do that cuz uh, what yeah, yeah, pretty cool. I'm glad I didn't do that cuz I'd be without an 8015 period. There it is. That I wish they would make the Natchez Bowie and uh, and the Laredo Bowie with the damn leather handles already, and and or the leather the leather sheaths. This is okay. So this is the drop point Voyager I was talking about. It's shaped like the uh, like the folding Hunter model of theirs. Yeah, look at that. So we got some. Oh, this is cool. The mini leather neck. It's a dagger. They also have one in Tanto. There's the Laredo, one of my favorite buoys. Great looking buoy knife, but man, in a, in a plastic sheath, it's kind of a shame. Oh, there it is in the clip point. That's pretty cool, the mini leather neck. Me likey. Oh, I should get some of these. I need to start really focusing on. Oh, look at it. See, I can't even finish my sentence. I need to start focusing on. Oh, look at that knife. But that was the drop point four inch Voyager. I need to start practicing knife throwing. That's what I was trying to say. Oh, yes, they're bringing back the three inch. And and all of the uh, oh, here's a new oh my gosh okay there's too much to talk about but this is the new a uh, new flipper and it's a uh, it's it's a uh, Tanto flipper there's the four max new handles and I think that's S thirty five VN if I'm not mistaken well pretty cool what do you guys think uh, it, it's uh, it's encouraging to know that there are some of these knives and that they brought uh, they brought they're bringing some of them back. It's encouraging to know that at least for the next year, like we'll have all the holdouts to uh, to choose. Here's the silver eye. They took the golden eye, got rid of the gold, and replaced it with silver. Uh, much better looking in this iteration, I think. I thought the golden eye was pretty goofy, uh, but I, I do like the 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 feel of the of the opener. There it is in Tanto. There's the signature version of the flipper. The Oyabun is a fantastic looking knife. Or I just added words. Put words in your mouth. Ooh, look at this thing. What is that? That looks like the sword Vlad the Impaler carries. Here is a serrated version of the old... Uh... Look at that. There's the Crawford in black handle. All right. Oh, that looks nice. Even though it's Stagalon, I really like that. That's the drop point, uh, drop forged Bowie. And, uh, well... In any case, I'm very much looking forward to uh, getting my hands on some of that stuff, and and, and am hoping that uh, you know in 2022, if it's not Cold Steel, it's Lynn Thompson, but that they continue with some of the crazier designs because someone needs to do them. And man, there's no one better qualified. Time will tell. A wiser, wiser statement was never said, Sir Morgan. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree with you. That's that's the only way because right now. It's in transition. It's all brand new. And uh, Hollywood uh, Tactical was right. It's uh, uh, Things have been in the works for a long time. Check out that listener line, 724-466-4487. 724-466-4487. Got a message today asking about someone else's service. I get I get calls. People think that, um, that the guests on the show, um, like I'm their agent, and they should call me. And then I'll get in touch with them and say, "Hey, so and so wants you to sharpen their knives." Um, I'm I'm no one's agent, barely my own. So, uh, 
call the listener line to let us know like cool stuff that we can put in an audio montage. Oh, I just got the, uh, I just got the new Finch or, uh, you know, I think the new AD 15 is going to be awesome or whatever it is. And, uh, leave us a message and, uh, we want to stitch together a nice big long, you know, montage at the end of it all and uh, play it back. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that would be uh, lovely. So 724-466-4487. Now we come to the end of the show and it's Adamus versus AD10. And I have no one to argue with. So unless someone signs on in the next, I don't know, few minutes here, at thenifejunkie.com slash join and debates with me, the Adamus versus the AD10. We all know how this is going to go. We all know which Bob is going to win. Is it going to be Benchmade Bob who wins or is it going to be AD10 Bob who wins? Now, actually, a more interesting question would be, is it going to be um, Shane Sibbert Bob who wins or is it going to be Andrew Demko Bob who wins? Because Shane Sibbert's knives, man, are so amazing. I would like to see Cold Steel bring back the scimitar spike. I love that knife. Cheap but cool. And they had the little ball on the end, the little steel ball. I thought that was a, a cool move. Shane Sibbert, I mean, when when his knives come up for sale, it's like 2500 bucks, and they are immaculate looking. Uh, you got to check him out if you don't know who he is. He's kind of a <clears throat> quiet legend uh, in this industry. Uh, I reached out to him. He said, yes, I want to come on the podcast. And there's been crickets ever since I send people dates and then they, they, you know, they, they get busy. Uh, I'm sorry. What, what was that? That monster said, that's actually a really good knife fight. I, I think it is too, because they are both so, so stout and so ready for action. And, uh, and there are some people who are just bench made people. And there are some people who are cold steel people monster. Why don't you come on and, uh, and debate it? Won't take much of your time. Obviously, you've got nothing better to do. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're probably actually doing something at the same time. 8010, Bob is going to metaphorically destroy Benchmade Bob. Yes, I think so too. <laughs> that doesn't sound so bad. Yes, agreed. Agreed. The Adamus, though, I gotta say, uh, of all the Benchmades, it's, it's up there. With the Contigo and the and the um crooked river and um the mchenry williams the the four inch one custom or cold steel oh oh it's got to be cold steel because uh I, i'm just talking production um i i wouldn't even i wouldn't even know because i've never touched a uh, uh a custom ad10 my internet is crap otherwise i would all right cool well Sometime next time, next time you find yourself in a spot with better internet or if the internet gets better, love to have you on and debate something like this in the future. Oh my gosh, something ah, air filter must have turned off. Uh, okay, so hmm, Adamus versus 8010. Okay, so for the purpose of this knife fight, we're going to assume that the AD10 is flat ground. The one that I the one that I have is hollow ground, uh, and I, which I prefer. And it was the first uh, I think the first uh, run of them were hollow ground, and then they came out. Uh, and and not for nothing, recently uh, they've been doing Bob versus Bob is the only knife fight Bob can win. <laughs> oh God, it's funny because it's true. Um, a lot of their knives that were once hollow ground are now flat ground, and and. My initial disappointment is always usurped by my thrill at how amazingly they do a flat grind and how incredibly, incredibly sharp they make their knives. But uh, this knife fight has not begun yet. So we're assuming that it's the Adamus versus the flat ground 8010. Okay. All right. So uh, I'll start with... I'll start with the Adamus. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen of this esteemed forum, thank you for bringing together this important debate about knives, about the Adamus by Benchmade versus the 8010 flat ground by Cold Steel. Both are admirable knives, no doubt. The 8010 has a storied past, first in the custom world and then... Uh, 
uh, adequately or even even uh, even honorably uh, uh, reproduced in the production world. But the Adamus, Adamus, is a a knife that really lives up to what its reputation or for what its uh, original intent is, which is a hard use, hard, hard use knife. This is a knife that uh, almost for which cutting is secondary. This is a knife built to survive. To survive what? Yes, exactly. To survive what? To survive everything. Uh, so you add the, the very uh, stout uh, build of it, the thickness and the um, incredibly strong build of it with the ease and the comfort and the fidgetability of an axis lock. And you have a knife that is not only capable of surviving anything, literally, uh, but it is also just fun to have around. So uh, because of that fidget factor, and because of the Shane Sibbert design and the cold uh, and the uh, Benchmade um, execution, I say that the Adamus and now the mini Adamus with all the contouring and stuff is clearly superior to the AD10. Thank you. All right, all right. Applause, applause. I'll let it die down. Mm -hmm. That. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I appreciate it. <laughs> Alex, how you doing? Sorry, I just broke the fourth wall. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Uh, Benchmade Bob really did put on, uh, put up quite a good argument for the Adamus. And actually, uh, Bob, I think Adamus, what does that mean? Man or something? It means something very, very primal in some ancient language, which I don't I'm unsure of, but that even lends to the gravitas of the knife. I will give you that um, and let you know that I'm, I, I admire Shane Sibbert's designs uh, greatly. However, the Adamus is a bench made and that is starting from a deficit um, from cold steel Bob's uh, point of view. So we're working uphill. How are we gonna take this design, this fine, fine design and do it justice through this sort of manufacturing process that we've kind of gotten and kind of fallen back into, fallen into in terms of the, the kind of a negative groove. Like sometimes things aren't as good as we want them to be when they leave. So how do we how do we take a premium flagship design like the Adamus and and really and really tighten down? Well, I say we don't have the problem with the AD10. Because the man who designed and developed, really researched and developed uh, the the backbone of the 8010, which is the triad lock, and then developed the knife and worked on it for years and years in his own custom shop, also works on the production model and works very closely, uh, you know, with Cold Steel in making that a reality. So perhaps if Shane Sibbert uh, took a position at Benchmade and uh, and uh, oversaw the production of his Adamus, uh, I wldn't be having this argument. But the AD10 is, uh, is, is, is more consistent. That's what I would have to say. I've held two Adamuses in my life. One of them was a switchblade and tremendously awesome. The other was rickety. It was almost as if they came from two different places. Who knows, maybe the second one was, uh, was not real uh, or not, uh, wasn't a genuine benchmate, but there was a considerable a difference in the two specimens. I have drawers full of cold steels and each one, uh, each one almost to a knife uh, is the same level of quality, same consistency. And uh, it, that has only gotten better over time. And you add the, the raw strength of the triad lock and you add, uh, you add the materials that they're using, S35VN, great uh, contoured G10, contoured, very comfortable. Uh, the Adamus is a little bit blocky. Well, the new mini one isn't, but it's mini. Um, you add those things together and you have a superior knife. And uh, I could talk more, but uh, my time is up and I rest my case. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Oh, flowers. Jeez. That's right. Roses, they have... They have uh, I have thorns, people. Just remember that.
So which Bob won the knife fight? Was it Benchmade Bob? Was it Cold Steel Bob? Um, talking about myself in third person, it's making me feel like a big shot. You're fired, Bob. <laughs> really? Both? Ah, uh, Alex, you should have been here. Bob versus Bob, this ep epic showmanship. Oh, I like that. Thank you, Lefty EDC. Epic showmanship. Uh, Hollywood Tactical says, access lock, while I totally prefer, cannot compete with the cold steel back lock in terms of purpose, in terms of its purpose of hard use. I would agree with you on that. Also, I don't have the knives next to each other, but I would, I would think that, and this is speaking objectively, I would think that the 8010 is a bit slicier, a little bit thinner uh, on ground, thinner behind the edge. Cold steel, Bob. I know, clearly, man, that's where my... That's where my heart was in that argument. But, I mean, debate is to, you should be able to argue both sides, right? You, you, don't, you don't do the straw man and present the weak argument and burn it down. You present the steel man, their best argument, and then you conquer it. Uh, Cold Steel Bob, I, I think it's, it's meant to be. It's meant to be. So we talk a lot about the triad lock, and I love the triad lock. But I've been looking at a couple of, I still have some old, I have a old Vaquero, a couple of old Vaqueros, a couple of old Voyagers. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I like that. Or it could be a golf clap. That's, uh, that's Slicey's thing. I like the slow build up clap. The old backlock of the Cold Steels, they bragged about how strong they were. And they were, man. I've, I've tried the stupid spine whack tests. And with the uh, with the non triad lock cold steels, man, those were very very strong. <laughs> Golf clap. No one matches cold steel, Bob. Not even Lynn Tufts. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, what? Huh? What? I was gonna say I don't have a cold steel in my pants. Like Lynn Thompson's always got a giant. Uh, he'll be like, oh, look at me. Look, nothing on me, right? Nothing on me. Then, and he'll pull out, you know, a Laredo buoy. And then, I'll, oh, that's for my right hand on my left side. I have, and I'll pull out like a Viking axe. Well, today, tonight, no, nah, I wasn't carrying this today at work, but I have my uh, my old safekeeper too. Such a great knife. I really like push daggers. But that's getting off. That's getting off the trail. Uh, all I was saying was that the old lock lock was pretty damn strong. You take you take you know that company that made the old lock, add uh, add some add some Demco and you get the Triad. Just a great innovation. And uh, I, I don't think uh, well, it'll be a while until someone outdoes it. I know the 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 deadbolt was an attempt, and I don't know I don't know if it's stronger or not, but. Eh. Not as compelling to me. Um, also, flipping something back in by holding the pivot, it's a weird position. You want to be a little bit off pivot. Uh, but that being said, I like CRKT, and I like how they innovate. So there you go. Anyway, I can feel my steam running out, people. You know, when Bob fights Bob, it's bad. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Sorry. Sorry I've been talking about myself in the third person. Uh, it makes me uncomfortable. So I'm going to stop doing that. All right, people, uh, that's about it for this Thursday Night Knives. Remember, next week uh, we have the giveaway. Thanks again to Dave. We have the giveaway of the uh, of the salty uh, <laughs> of the Sea Dog version two. I, I want to call it the Salty Dog, which was incidentally the very first alcoholic drink I ever had at age fourteen. Salty Dog. Uh, to my daughters who are watching this in the future. That was a really dumb thing for me to do, so psh, please don't do it. And, Dad, if you're watching right now, don't worry. It was with the Hewlett's on their boat. <laughs> oh, on their boat. Great. Okay, anyway, there it is. You'll be winning this if you win. It's a really great knife. This is a, this is a genuine, like, hard-use something you want to you wanna have somewhere where you're going to need to bust a window or something. Great car knife, great truck knife. Though I wouldn't want to leave it in my car because I'd be afraid – it gets stolen. So there you go. Check us out next week. And I think that does it. So for Jim, the man working behind the switcher, not only working behind the switcher, but you know, he, he carries a huge cognitive load too. He's got to deal with me and he's also an innovator himself and he's got other things going on in his life too. So Jim, I thank you as always and making this thing look awesome. Um, 
people are always asking, how do you make it look awesome? I'm like, ask Jim. Monster says, everyone have a great night. Nice talking to you. Great hobby. Or should I say addiction? Well, with a name like Knife Junkie, uh, Chris says, good night, everyone. Blade Ogre, it's a pleasure. Great having you. Michael, thanks for tuning in. Michael Morgan up in Canada. Hope you get your package. You will. Don't worry. You will. It'll all work out, people. It will all work out. So for Jim, I am Bob Shredder, guys. Take care. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Jim. Is Bob wearing a, a tag Hoyer? No, no, no. This is a uh, uh, it's a Seiko. Put it under the, the watch cam. It's a Seiko uh, um, 5 field watch. I dig it. Keeps really good time. My other five does not. Okay. So anyway, sorry. Great show. Thanks, Alex. Uh, so thank you, Jim. And for Jim, I'm Bob. And I'm saying good night and don't take dull for an answer. <laughs>